Um, hope everybody's having a good Apache Con at home. Uh, this is the session on Open Office Uno programming with Groovy. And I'm Carl Markham, a member of the Open Office PMC. So, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I come from a manufacturing engineering background. Um, about a year ago, I made the transition from en manufacturing engineering to uh, working in engineering IT at Emerson Electric, uh, where I've been for the past seven years, where I get a chance to do uh, automation on uh, 3D CAD applications and support our uh, PLM system also. Um, I freelance uh, under Code Builders LLC. I've uh, been involved with Open Office uh, since Oracle uh, brought it to Apache uh, and entered in incubation. Um, so later on, I was invited to be a PMC, and I'm currently serving a, a term as a VP Open Office. So uh, for the agenda, I've got a lot to uh, a lot of lot to cover. So I'm gonna this is going to be more of a high level overview. Um, talk a little bit about Open Office, um, some of the past work. Um, I primarily like to work on developer tools, uh, things like the NetBeans um, Open Office API plugin. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about Uno, uh, what it looks like, um, what Apache Groovy is. Um, hopefully some people have had a chance to check out those tracks uh, yesterday, of course, not the ones that overlap with ours. But um, then we'll get into, uh, I guess, what I'll call some of my pet projects um, about using Groovy uh, with Open Office Uno APIs. Uh, so I'll show you how uh, you can create a single Groovy script that's actually a Uno client to connect with and automate read from the uh, Open Office. Um, the Groovy Uno extension is a uh, project to extend the Open Office Java APIs uh, to make the code less verbose. Um, and basically it's a lot of convenience methods. And um, then like I was talking about the, uh, the NetBeans plugin, uh, I've worked on some project templates that you can use uh, from the command line. And uh, so we'll, then we'll go into an example of that. Uh, Calc is our spreadsheet application. So I'll build an add-in uh, to add uh, three new functions to the, uh, to the office. And uh, then finally, I'll wrap it up with the, um, an extension that adds Groovy as a macro language using the open office scripting framework. So, and then uh, hopefully I'll have some time for some questions. So, um, what is open office? So for those that don't know, it's a fully featured office suite, office productivity suite. It runs on um, all the major computer platforms and um, and quite a few languages. Uh, I think I was told today uh, over 40 right now. So uh, what would you want to use OpenOffice? Well, uh, besides being uh, Apache licensed, it has a uh, well-documented open architecture. Um, it has a great extension me mechanism that uh, we'll talk about uh, quite a bit. And uh, that allows you to add or remove functionality from the office um, as you like. Uh, like I said, calc add-ins uh, for adding functions to um, adding or re replacing the save command. You know, there's it's unlimited what you can do. And then we'll talk about the uh, scripting framework, uh, which uh, right now OpenOffice uh, supports 
um, scripting in a, a number of languages, uh, Python, uh, then there's Java languages um, like uh, Beanshell and JavaScript. So what is UNO? Um, UNO stands for Universal Network Objects. Um, it's the core uh, technology uh, underneath OpenOffice. Um, it, the way I look at it is uh, it's, it's the specifications and the API for uh, automating OpenOffice. So there's a, uh, there's a separate download that you can get. That's the software development kit. Uh, it contains tons of libraries, uh, documentation on the API, Java docs, things like that, as well as a number of examples for, um, for automation, um, doing extensions, things like that, for Java, C++, OpenOffice Basic. Um, there's even some support for the uh, .NET uh, CLI applications and a couple examples of um, ActiveX and uh, VBScript. So like I said, um, I'm primarily focused on developer tools. Uh, I build extensions and uh, customized in installations of OpenOffice. Um, so I was primarily concerned with the uh, with the NetBeans plugin for quite a while. This is a, uh, it's a Java plugin for NetBeans that uh, provides wizards for um, generating extension projects. So whether you want to do an add-on for any of the Office applications or what we call add-ins for adding functions to Calc, um, that's what you would have used uh, or probably used previous to this. Uh, I concentrated on updating the uh, plugin for um, new versions of OpenOffice and NetBeans uh, up until the current version, or not up until the current uh, OpenOffice version. Uh, that's not the current NetBeans version, but the plugin does still work even with the newest releases of, of NetBeans. So, looking to the future. Um, about 10 years ago, I was searching around for a, a, a web framework uh, for a client, and I uh, Java-based as, as one of, was one of the criteria. Um, I came across Grails. It used uh, convention over configuration, and um, it really would. I could quickly get a, a web application up and running. Um, this is how uh, I was in a, introduced to Groovy. So it used Groovy for all the backend controllers and services and things like that. And then after a major release, uh, they went from, from a custom build uh, tool to uh, using Gradle. Um, you know, in this ecosystem, I also found Griffin. It's great for, uh, for uh, Java desktop applications. There's uh, Spock for unit testing and functional testing. There's uh, Grails for uh, web automation. So there's a lot you can do with those last two tools for testing. Um, but um, it all centered around Groovy. So uh, I started using Groovy 10 years ago. Uh, it is a great tool. Uh, at the time, it was uh, really providing modern features uh, that uh, Java wasn't uh, providing at the time. Um, that's changed recently. Uh, they've been making uh, great leaps in uh, functionality with the new releases. Um, and unfortunately, Groovy's uh, keep, keeping me from uh, exploring those right now, but uh, I do plan to in the future. So um, what is Groovy? Uh, Groovy is an optionally typed dynamic language for the JVM. Um, you can use, if, if you're familiar with Python, um, you can use you can use the uh, def keyword uh, when you're um, initializing variables, and then Groovy will decide what type it is. Um, or you can do like I generally do, and you can statically type everything just like you would in Java. 
Um, Groovy, I'll say Groovy can run 95% of the Java code um, right out of the box. You just rename it dot groovy. Um, so it has really good support for uh, for the Java syntax, although it has a lot of other features uh, that you would probably like when you give it a try. Uh, like I said, it integrates uh, smoothly with Java, uh, it compiles to uh, Java bytecode, and uh, you can actually use it uh, alongside Java in the same project. So uh, it's really easy. Uh, for Java developers to get up to speed with uh, because of the uh, syntax. Uh, like I said, there's a, a, a big ecosystem around it. It has modern features like closures. Uh, I'll touch on that briefly and, and what they call builders. Um, one of the uh, aspects that I really like about it is the meta programming. Uh, and that's what allows me uh, to uh, extend the Java Uno APIs in a project I'll show you in a bit. Um, DSLs, and uh, like I said, it's great for writing tests and build automation. So some things about uh, Groovy, uh, you don't need to use semicolons. Uh, it's smart enough to figure out where the end of a line is, uh, but you can include them, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, classes and methods are public by default. Uh, that's a little different than Java. Um, when you're uh, when you're setting pro or, uh, creating properties, they're actually private fields, and it will create the getters and setters for you without you specifying them, unless you need something uh, that you don't get with the defaults. Um, and some of the code you'll notice uh, what looks like property access but it's, it's really using these getters and setters behind the scenes. Um, Groovy has what it calls Groovy strings um, for uh, interpolation. So instead of concatenating your strings together when you want to use a variable uh, in the middle, uh, you can do it just like it's shown there with Groovy, which would be the variable in this case. Um, closures. Uh, closures are reusable code blocks. So uh, uh, most of the time you'll see them in line like I have it shown here, but you can also um, declare them separately and use them uh, in different places in your code. So uh, this example here is taking the list and uh, in, instead of using a for loop, um, this would print the, uh, print the item which would be each item in the list over and over until you were out. Um, there's uh, no such thing as primitives in Groovy, uh, like a Java int. Uh, primitive would actually be uh, the, uh, the wrapper uh, object uh, integer and so on. Um, so the uh, print line statement uh, is, uh, that would be short for uh, system out print line. So uh, Make sure uh, it makes a little less typing if you're not using an IDE. So we'll get into a little bit of uh, UNO here. Um, so UNO has the concept of uh, service managers. So the service manager is like a, a object factory or a service factory. Um, services in UNO are the objects uh, that you would use to do work essentially. So there's uh, five, what I'll call five top uh, service services. Uh, the desktop service is the one uh, that I use uh, most of the time. That's uh, responsible for uh, like documents that you would open, things that you put in frames. So in, in, in the window. Uh, configuration provider uh, handles things like uh, what you would find in tools options. Um, and most of these are self-explanatory. The database ha context handles uh, the databases, uh, system shell execute for executing shell commands, and uh, global settings handles uh, things like uh, print settings. So, 
um, services and interfaces. So like I said, the uh, services are the objects that uh, you would use to do the work, um, except when you're using um, uh, Java uh, and the, um, for Uno. So you have to use the interfaces that are um, provided by the services. So uh, in this case, I wouldn't use the office document or the spreadsheet document there on the left. I would be using the model storable spreadsheet document. Um, the interfaces all start with an X, so they're not confused with the services. So uh, like in Java, where you would normally use a, uh, the new keyword to create objects, in Uno, um, once we get a service um, from the service manager, uh, we start using the interfaces. And to get from one interface, which is the interfaces are, um, I guess, um, fine grained. So uh, they're designed so they can be reused in other uh, places like uh, lots of applications deal with text. Uh, so you might have, might use text in a spreadsheet, you might use text in writer, things like that. So they try to uh, make it so you can reuse it. Um, now, the other tricky part is when you go, uh, when you start, well, to say with a model and you want to save it. Uh, so you would need to use the storable, for instance. So uh, you have to use the static uh, UNO runtime class and query the interface. So uh, you'll see a lot of uh, this query interface um, in, a, in a Java UNO application. So you do the query interface, you, the target is the one you want and the interface you want and the source object is the one you already have. So uh, that'll be important here in a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not gonna try to do a big deep dive in a lot of this, but uh, this comes from our, uh, our developer, uh, developer guide and it's also in the SDK documentation. This is what they, we call the first contact. So this is the very beginning of the like tutorial, we'll call it. So uh, I'll just step through it, uh, and give you a little flavor on, on what we do in almost all these applications. So that would be like a typical client application. So uh, the first thing we would do is get a, a component context. So that's kind of like a base object. Um, that we get from the connection. So the bootstrap uh, method that's shown here is uh, how we, if, if open office isn't running, it'll fire up open office and make it and make a socket connection and uh, give you back a uh, component context. I call it the remote context because there's actually op, um, objects on both sides of this. Um, because it's like operating over a network. So your client has the remote context and the server, which is open office, would have the local version of that context. So after you've bootstrapped the office, then um, next thing you wanna get is this uh, service manager uh, that we were talking about. That's our factory. So we get the, uh, cert we get the service manager uh, from the remote, from the component context or the re remote version of it. And the next thing we do is um, that, if you remember that top uh, level service, the desktop we talked about, um, that's what I'm getting here. Now I don't have an uh, implementation of that to really use, I'm just getting a reference to it. That's why it's an object um, and it doesn't have a static uh, interface name or type. So uh, I'm going to use that remote service manager to uh, factory up the object or the, uh, the desktop. And then I'm going to use that desktop. Here's that Uno runtime query interface for the first time. And I'm going to use that desktop to uh, ask for a component loader. So the component loader is what I use to actually load the file. So, um, and the next step, I'm going, I'm asking for a um, empty 
a calc file, basically a brand new file. And then the final step, I'm using the UNA runtime query interface again to get the spreadsheet document. And now I can start working with the spreadsheet. So that's kind of a high level overview. So um, there's four main Java UNO libraries um, that are divided up by the um, by the by their functionality. So uh, the one I wanted to skip to is the UNO IL library, and that one is um, like the spreadsheet document that uh, that I just showed you. That's in that's in that library. So. Those are completely generated from what we call IDL files or interface definition language files. So those are like the specifications. So there's tools within OpenOffice that you can use to generate Java class files or, or tools to create these uh, classes for other languages. And that's how we get multi-language support. <clears throat> So uh, first, uh, the PEP project, it's not really a project, I guess, but uh, the project was in getting to where you could use a groovy script to, to build a, create, uh, a complete um, client application. So uh, some of the things that, that uh, make that possible is uh, groovy has a built-in dependency manager. So in a lot of uh, modern build tools, uh, Maven, Gradle, things like that, um, they can pull down jars from online um, artifact repositories like Maven Central or Bentray. So Groovy, a Groovy script can do this using the at grab annotation that you see there. Um, the Bootstrap connector, there is a special uh, library that is used for uh, bootstrapping the office based on a file path. So in uh, traditional clients like created with the uh, NetBeans uh, plugin, that um, there's, there are special classes for discovering uh, where the office is, like it'll look through um, standard directory structures uh, directory paths, um, depending on whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux. So, and then it'll, or it could search the class path, looking for jars, things like that. Uh, so we're in, we're in one script file here. So we want to, um, we need to do away with all that. So uh, that's what the bootstrap connector uh, jar there is for. Uh, the next four uh, are the Java Uno uh, libraries. But these are versions that uh, I put in Maven Central so they can be pulled down and, um, and used in Gradle builds or Groovy scripts or things like that that could be used in Maven builds. Um, so the next part uh, that I touched on is the, in the script, you would have a, a, a path to your open office folder and then the uh, bootstrap connector would do the rest. So, um, The next piece of this is, uh, well, I'll show you. Uh, this is code that you would have in your script. Uh, looks just like uh, what you would see in the uh, first uh, first contact uh, from the developer guide. Uh, but the but the code at the bottom is a shorter version that's um, that's made possible with what uh, I call the Groovy Uno extension, and that's going to be the next subject of the talk. And basically, that's where I'm adding convenience methods. In this case, I'm bypassing uh, some of the boilerplate code uh, that you would need in a client. Um, so that's the Groovy Uno extension. So the way this works is Groovy has something called extension modules. So you create a class, like in this, in this case, a spreadsheet extension. And then in that class, you uh, you dictate your methods, you define where you define your methods. So in this case, um, I'm adding a get spreadsheet document to uh, what is shown here in the first argument. That's the X, that's the component class um, and everything that inherits from it. 
So when you can, uh, when you use this uh, extension, X component now will have this um, get spreadsheet document method available, and it does. And Groovy does this at runtime, so it instruments these classes um, at runtime. So, uh, so basically, this is just a little diagram of what we're doing here. Uh, the Groovy Uno extension is using these API or the, these libraries and adding convenience methods. Uh, most of what I have so far uh, deals with the spreadsheet APIs, uh, but I plan on um, adding more um, as I go, and hopefully um, people may be interested in this after, after this talk. <laughs> and uh, maybe jump in and help. So uh, enough about that. So what we'll uh, show a little bit about um, some other things. Uh, like I talked before, the query interface um, used all over the place in uh, Java Uno programming. First thing I wanted to do was kind of not really get rid of it because it's still in the lot used in the library, but uh, get rid of a lot of the uh, ver verbosity of it. So uh, I replaced that with a method uh, called GUNO. So you'll see in the, uh, the bottom of that uh, section there, I'm using, uh, I'm using that method and I'm using it on an instance of the uh, object that I have. So I'm not using it as a static UNO runtime method. Uh, I'm actually using it on the uh, on the object itself and passing it the uh, class that I want back. So that makes it a, a little more straightforward. So another thing uh, in Uno is um, to get uh, properties of a lot of these objects, uh, you use what uh, they call a property set. Uh, so you would uh, set property value, uh, get property value, things like that. One thing I've done um, that you can, that I did using Groovy, is I also added uh, get at and put at methods, which those are special names. Um, by doing that, using those special names, I'm add, I'm able to add this, use the subscript operator, as Groovy calls it like down at the bottom on the last line, which looks like map or collection access uh, in Groovy. So uh, those four methods at the top um, are also added. So those are convenience methods that I've added uh, for uh, setting and getting cell contents. So um, instead of having to get the cell range, uh, get the cell text, uh, and then setting the setting the string on the cell text object, I can go right from the spreadsheet um, with a um, with the coordinates of the cell and uh, put you do the set formula of cell, which is the name of the uh, the new method uh, right there in one line. So uh, it's four lines down to one. So I won't go through all, all of what this does, it's just a little larger example to, to uh, kind of uh, illustrate um, how much uh, shorter your, uh, your code can get with uh, methods like this, with uh, using convenience methods and the Groovy uh, extension module. So uh, one of the other uh, convenience methods that I've added is uh, message boxes. So uh, the, the code at the top is an example of uh, displaying a message box that's shown on the left. Just a simple, just one simple box and look at all the code. So uh, I wanted to improve on that. So um, I've added some convenience methods for uh, displaying that message box. Uh, the next slide is a little more uh, involved example or a little fancier box uh, that has uh, this default title, it, uh, it has a custom title and uh, some more of the standard buttons, button arrangements that we would use. So um, this, isn't a, this isn't part of the extension, but uh, one of the things that uh, 
Groovy also brings to um, to programming is uh, when you're using uh, Java Swing, which is uh, for those that are Java developers, Swing was the second generation UI toolkit after uh, AWT, which was the original toolkit, which was more heavyweight. Um, Swing is a little lighter weight. So um, one of the uh, one of the harder things that uh, especially new developers uh, deal with on working with Swing UIs is getting the um, what we call the uh, event dispatch thread, or uh, so you don't block your program with the UI. So um, this Swing Builder here um, handles that with the uh, the .edt method there, so it automatically uh, generates the bytecode correctly for you to deal with the uh, the threading issues. So that's just a uh, example of a simple UI with a with a label and a button. So. The next thing I want to talk about is the um, the project templates. So one of the things about the uh, the NetBeans uh, plugin that I talked about was um, well, it's you're, you're locked to the NetBeans IDE, which is a great IDE by the way. And uh, congratulations to NetBeans on uh, becoming a top level project at Apache. But um, you know, I don't like the idea necessarily of IDE lock-in. Um, there's different times when maybe a client, I need to use a different IDE on a project or something like that. So uh, I, w I wanted to make this uh, IDE independent. So I, I chose to use uh, the grant tool uh, in these projects. And I started with the, uh, the NetBeans uh, project templates. Um, where those are uh, UI wizards and um, quite uh, elaborate, then uh, I wanted just a simple command line tool that I could quickly get, uh, you know, get these projects up and running. Um, so, with uh, the different types of templates that we're talking about, is a client application that would be a standalone application that you're automating the office with or uh, the calc add-ins uh, for adding uh, spreadsheet functions. And uh, add-ons, I, uh, I haven't worked on yet, but that would add general functionality into any of the applications in OpenOffice. So that's uh, coming soon. So these project templates, I wanted uh, simple to create, minimal setup, uh, IDE independent, um, like I said, I derived them from the NetBeans IDE projects. And uh, LazyBones was another uh, tool that I found in the uh, Groovy ecosystem. And uh, some of the other projects, I believe uh, Griffin uses it uh, still. Um, can't confirm that, I'd, I'd have to go check, but uh, that was I think that was where I found it at actually. So, um, and, and, and for all these projects that I've, I've got on GitHub, I'm gonna give you links to it. Uh, there's a lot of documentation out there on how to get lazy, but how to set it up, but it's a really simple command line tool to set up. So uh, the way these templates work is, um, so I'm just checking my time here. So I've got about five minutes, so I'm gonna maybe try to pick it up a little bit. Um, so the way these templates work, you create, you put your XML files, your uh, your classes, um, you use uh, variables in, in your uh, in these files that are replaced at uh, creation time. So the Lazy Bones tool would um, would copy these files. Some of them may get renamed. There's a group. There's actually a Lazy Bones uh, dot Groovy script. That, that handles the way these templates are turned and copied into projects. Uh, so you can just, you know, set your own package, um, package names, class names, things like that for your project. 
uh, and then Lazy Bones takes care of that. So <clears throat> this is an example, a real life example from a project I was working on uh, recently where um, um, actually I was having to use Excel at work and um, I was dealing with the, uh, a lot of file paths and I was having to break them down into their base name and extension, uh, file path, things like that based on a full string. And um, while th those, um, while those, while using functions for that, um, they can get, they can get really ugly fast when you start trying to deal with uh, multiple decimal places and uh, Unix paths versus window paths, things like that. So I decided uh, this would be a, a good example to create uh, some uh, custom functions for uh, stripping these strings down into their base components for the files. So uh, that, and uh, also uh, Apache Commons has a great library for this called File Name Utils. So to uh, in this example, we're going to run through um, using the uh, lazy bones uh, create command. The uh, AOO add-in is the name of the uh, project. Uh, 030 there is the version of it. And then it will pull this down from Ventray and uh, create, your, uh, create your project. In this case, the name is file utils add-in. Uh, you'll answer a few questions like the package name that you want to use, and uh, then it will generate output for you, which is really the uh, readme file that will go into your project, showing you how to build a project, uh, what the directory structure looks like, and, uh, and some files that you might want to edit. So uh, right off the bat, this is a buildable uh, extension from a sample. There's a, there's a sample that just adds something onto a string but uh, it, it, it actually runs right out of the box. So we'll just uh, jump through this real quick. Um, so in, in the build file, you, uh, in the dependence block, I added the Apache Commons IO library. And uh, there's a lot, the IDL file and, and the uh, template uh, defines the uh, three functions as the, well, the interface definition for them. Uh, there's an implementation Groovy script where I go in and replace the sample method that's in there with the three new methods that I want and I import in the file name utils. Um, there's a, a XML file uh, that's for the open office extensions that describes this extension. Uh, edit your lines there. Uh, there's also another XML file for description information, in this case, uh, logos and things like that, the display name and uh, the extension manager and the display description in a file. So uh, then you build the file using the Gradle build tool and this zip is the task or the target. And uh, we're actually using uh, Gradle's built-in support for uh, ant tasks. So I copied a lot of ant task over from the NetBeans uh, plugin for this task for generating these classes from IDL files and things like that. And uh, then we have a, then after we run the build, um, this would be the build, the build tree, uh, the classes that are compiled by ant and the classes that are compiled by Groovy or Gradle. And, um, the uh, jar files and then are all of it packaged into the OXT file, which is our extension. Um, so that's what it looks like in the extension manager. And uh, the next part of the talk is, I know I'm running out of time, um, Groovy macros and open office. So this is another extension um, that when you uh, import it into the office, it's going to add Groovy as a macro language. So I'm using the scripting framework that's already in OpenOffice to, because um, there's already support for Bean Shell and JavaScript. It, was, um, it wasn't that bad of a task to use the Bean Shell example as built into OpenOffice to uh, add Groovy. 
So it uses the Groovy shell class to, um, to do the script or to evaluate the scripts. And this is an example of creating a new script. And then you get a uh, boilerplate uh, hello world file macro um, where that's the, uh, and, uh, this automatically comes with the Groovy Uno extension built in also. So one of the advantages of the macros is you already get the script context shown over on the right. So that saves bootstrapping, getting that component context and all that, um, and lets you get right to business. So uh, there's some, just some simple lines in this. And this again, this macro, when you first create a macro, it, it's a running hello world application. And then the, also in that macro, there's lots of help text um, uh, for finding the developer guide and going to finding information about Groovy, et cetera. So the, uh, then I've also got another extension that adds uh, a lot of the sample macros that come with OpenOffice that are in BeanShell and JavaScript. And uh, I've recreated those in Groovy and then you can add all of those at once using the extension mat extension manager in open office so the um, the downside of that is that you can't edit them because it comes in with an extension it's still packaged in an archive so i would actually suggest going to the github page and copying and pasting the code from the uh, that project into your newly created uh, scripts and uh, that way you can play with Groovy. So in summary, uh, OpenOffice is highly customizable. Uh, Groovy has great capabilities to improve Uno programming and there's efforts underway to improve it even more. So uh, I hope you'll uh, come to uh, OpenOffice and uh, join us on the developer list. And um, you can also uh, download uh, some of these uh, uh, pet projects of mine uh, and uh, contact me if there's any questions about them. So uh, I've got a set of links uh, toward the end, open office, Groovy, uh, links to everything I've talked about here. And uh, I really appreciate everybody for joining. Um, I know I think we're, oh, I'm over time. So uh, I uh, do. I'm sorry I don't have time for questions, but uh, let's see. So uh, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we'll see you at the next talk. Bye.